you know what? Uh, why don't you guys introduce yourself? Like I did just now, I can I I can introduce you all with a very formal introduction, but what is the point, right? You guys, I guess, would be easier to introduce yourself. So let's start with you. All right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. No problem. All right. And assalamualaikum and good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I would like to thank the organizer for inviting me and giving me this opportunity, sharing a stage with the great Kevin. The great and, Kevin. <laughs> the great Kevin okay. and also three other amazing fresh graduates. Okay. Hi, uh, my name is Nick Muhammad Nuzul, bin Nick Muhammad. I graduated from the University of Sheffield in Computer System Engineering. Um, after graduation, I co-founded a video production company called Kia Studios. And right now, I'm working as an IT executive at EPF. Yep. Okay. What about you? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Fatin Nabila Ibrahim. Uh, I go by Fatin. Uh, I'm an economics graduate from University College London, UCL. Um, I graduated in 2019, and now I work as an associate analyst um, in Bank Negara Malaysia in the financial development sector. Okay, and? Hello everyone, um, good morning, my name is Tarin. Uh, I'm currently working as an actual analyst at Milliman, it's an actual consulting firm. Um, studied in the London School of Economics and Political Science, um, graduated in 2019. It's been two years since I started working. Okay. Um, that's pretty much about it, yeah. All right, and hello everyone. Um, thank you for coming. Assalamualaikum. I'm Nurul Huda binti Yaakob. Uh, I have just graduated from University of Warwick uh, in 2019, actually, um, in majoring in accounting and finance. So uh, I was an alumni of Student Volunteers Foundation um, <laughs> and a recipient of Volunteering Award in 2019. So okay. that's pretty much about it. So you guys are all uh, UK graduates, lah. In a way, yeah. UK yep. graduates. I'm also a UK graduate. Uh, not many people know that. I graduated <laughs> marine engineering uh, from Newcastle. Uh, but I started working 21 years ago. I mean, no, 19 years ago. 19. And I stopped working six years ago. So it's fine. Right? I, I, don't, know, I don't work anymore. But So today is about you guys. It's, a, it's about asking you guys what, what is your perception? What do you think is going to happen next? And what do you think you know, it, it's going to be the step forward for everybody mm -hmm. else. Like, you know, like there's one thing I want to ask you guys. Like, we all, when we started our tertiary ed education, mm -hmm. right, we all had this, this thing about how work life is going to be, right? When we started, we, maybe you all started four or five years ago. You know, we all thought like, oh, when I go to a job, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be the best job in the world. How does it measure up now? <clears throat> okay, um, Kevin. So, um, before graduation, right, when I was in university, I always thought that my career life would be linear, okay? I would graduate, mm -hmm. get a stable job, and then eventually I would retire, okay? okay? As simple as that. Um, but when I think back, I was just being silly. Yeah. As we all know, um, the pandemic happened and I had to come back to Malaysia earlier than expected and I had to continue learning virtually. Okay, So during the 14 days of quarantine, when I came back to Malaysia, I actually quarantined with my friends uh, that I came back with. And every day we saw like the pandemic, the start of the pandemic was really depressing. People lose their jobs, lose their source of income, and every day we would brainstorm on ways how we can help these people, all right? So, um, we thought of, okay, it would be good if we could start a video production company that would help these businesses to connect with their customers, okay? Because everyone was connected digitally. Even before the pandemic, everyone was connected digitally. But during the pandemic, it was being accelerated. Okay? So we did just that. Okay? So I thought, okay, still linear, still just one job. And then fast forward to um, January this year, 
I was in Langkawi um, shooting a job, and then I got a phone call. Okay, and it was from an unknown number. I went outside, I pick up the phone, and it was someone from EPF. Okay, they offered me a job. Fast forward to February, I joined EPF. Okay, so the reason why I took another job was because that when I thought back, I didn't think that um, I thought that my life shouldn't be that linear, that straightforward. Okay, it should be exciting, like Kevin said just now, right? And I wanted to try a lot of things. Being a computer engineering graduate, of course, I was passionate about IT, about the technology, and I wanted to try it out, to work professionally. And so I did. Okay. Um, so, to answer your question just now, <laughs> yeah, um, my expectation for the career life before graduation and after graduation, it's totally different. And it has been a wonderful journey and looking forward to more to come. All right. Fatin, what about you? Okay. Uh, I didn't expect to go in lines, but sure. No, <laughs> I, I always start off in line and then I will jumble it up. Great. Okay. Um, I guess for me, when I went into the working life, I expected it to be... Um, I expected to have to know something before doing the job. But then I soon came to understand that actually you learn on the job a lot and that you might start a new project not knowing, knowing absolutely zero and then working from there. Um, and I feel like my journey learning has never really stopped. And that's been a great thing for me. Um, I feel like um, I'm constant, constantly being challenged. Um, and at the same time, I didn't expect uh, work to be as fast-paced as it is now. I think in part, the COVID kind of accelerated that. Um, six months into my job, uh, COVID happened, we started moving online, um, and we had to work from home um, for every single thing. And I think that really changed the dynamic of work. But I feel like even though the work dynamic has been accelerated so much, it has been rewarding for me because I have been expected to ex um, pick up new skills just as much as the older people have. And I feel like that's given us, our generation, an opportunity to really prove ourselves. But I think also that's where our generation really has to step up and really show our agility. In a, in a time where things are evolving so fast, we do have to be agile. We do have to adapt, just as how the panelists uh, in the previous session told us. We have to be that quick at adapting just so that we can keep up with how quickly things are evolving. And I'm sure, and I, I, I really feel that my employers do appreciate me for my agility in stepping up in these kind of situations. Um, and so, it, to me, work life has been very unexpected. Um, I expected to, you know, uh, be comfortable in six months. But honestly, two years in, I'm still struggling with new things every single day. But the good thing, it's a new challenge every single time. But also at the same time, I think I've really um, decided, I've really uh, become a more adaptable person and that I can take challenges head on. And that's given me, um, I actually has actually made my attitude towards work and life a lot better as well. Yeah. Hey. How, Darren? Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, they seem to have taken all the good points, but let me try to add value to that. Yeah. Um, so I completely agree with Nozo in that sense that uh, we do need to be agile, especially in today's world with the pandemic happening, changing everything, you know, from head to toe. Um, but from, from moving from being a student in university and then moving on to the job, you know, as a fresh graduate, uh, studying is easy in a sense that you have clear goals, mm -hmm. you have clear objectives that yeah. you wish to achieve. For example, you have exams, you're studying for certain subjects, you have um, your thesis to submit. The objective is very clear. It's planned out for you. All you have to do is work towards it, put your best towards it. And uh, you somewhat expect that um, an adult life or your career would be very similar in a sense. You know, you work towards something. Uh, there, are, there are very clear objectives to achieve at every certain time point. But uh, in truth, it's been far from that. Right. It's never a linear approach to it. Um, things are always, no, they tend to change. Yep. They tend to change. They tend to evolve as time goes by. Uh, so, so it's important to be, to acknowledge that fact, to, to not be disappointed when things jumble up and your plan gets changed. And um, again, going back to Nuzo's point, to be agile and to, to, to be adaptable. Okay. Change your goalposts around as well. Uh, I, think, I think that's the biggest uh, takeaway I had from moving from become, being a student to you know, uh, uh, being a fresh and freshly employed person. Yeah.
Alright, and Nuro? Sorry, Kevin. Can I just add on to sure, um, Tyrone's yeah. point? Um, I think my boss told me a really uh, important quote that I've held on to. Um, and that she said that you should be comfortable with change. Mm. And truly yeah. change is the only constant that you will have in work life. And I think that's given me a lot of comfort um, navigating through this very change, uh, ever-changing world. Okay. Nuro? Yeah, I agree with everyone's point. You need to be agile at this point where pandemic has... Uh, completely turn uh, how our normal life is. Lah. <laughs> okay, so as for me, uh, my expectation is completely different. I have always thought that I will be an external auditor in a big four somewhere, but somehow that's not uh, the case. Currently, I'm an internal auditor in Perkeso um, because I did my internship in a uh, big four audit firm and somehow you can, uh, by with this internship experience, you can uh, know uh, how your life will be and what kind of tasks and are you interested to do um, audit, external audit stuff, uh, for example. So you must know yourself well. Um, ask yourself what you want in this life. What kind of path that you want to uh, take on later when you have finished uh, your study. Um, it's okay, just take your time, uh, reflect on yourself. It doesn't have to take such a long time for a year, no. Okay, um, so... Um, as my mentor said, uh, my, as he said that knowledge is king, knowledge is power. So read everything about the company, about the industry and the people you want to work for. That will definitely help so that you will have a little, uh, know what to expect. So back to you. Okay. Uh, Tarun, I, I, I'm drawn to you for this question. Right? It, it's not in the script, don't worry. <laughs> the, 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 the question is, you know when you were a kid, Right, when mm -hmm. you were standard one, standard two, and then your cikgu will ask lah, eh, bila dah besar nak jadi apa? Mm -hmm. What was your answer then? Engineer. Engineer? Yeah. Okay lah. It you, was my answer until up to SPM. Maybe. You hit the spot lah, I guess, you know, in a <laughs> sense. Because I, uh, as, as you know, we come from a uh, situation where Asian families, you only have three jobs, or four, four. You have four jobs uh, <laughs> that you can do, which is engineer, Doctors? Doctor, sure. lawyer, or disappointment. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's either one or four, but you, I mean, obviously, you all have chose the right path, I guess, <laughs> in a way, because you all actually have a job, unlike me. Uh, but, you know, what do you have any, do you, do, what do you think of this passion versus money thing? Um, I, think it's, I think it's a difficult topic to talk about because right. um, I'm a very practical person in that sense. I do believe that passion is needed when you do go to your daily jobs. If not, it's going to be something that you do. You know, it's, a mundane, it's going to be a mundane routine every day. You wake up, you do your work, and then you sleep, and then you repeat the cycle all over again. Um, there's nothing to inspire you or motivate you in your day job. Mm -hmm. So you definitely need passion right. to, do all, to do all... Let passion direct you towards a job that you like. But at the same time, um, we do need money to survive. So that, that's where the practical part comes in. So I don't think, and un unfortunately, I don't think a lot of us have the option to continue pursuing passion at the expense of not being able to generate income for our families or for ourselves. So, so I think um, there has to be a balance between uh, pursuing your passion and also pursuing uh, income to sustain yourself or to reach some financial objectives that you have for yourself. I think, I mean, the best option would be if your passion is money. That is well, yeah, of that course. That is correct. Like, yeah. Then you have both. Fair yeah. Uh, Fatin, I, I, I'm going to ask you the same question. When you were a kid, what was your ambition? Like when you were really young? A doctor, of course. A doctor. <laughs> okay, so you miss a little bit. A little bit. Like. It's, not, it's not that far off. But, uh, you know, passion versus money. Like, you know, I'm, I, I would fight for passion any day. Like, I, you know, because that's what I did. I... I I, I went for my passion rather than money. What, what do you think? Where, where do you stand on this? Um, I personally think it's like a triangle. Mm -hmm. So it's passion, money, and time. Right. And in this world, unfortunately, you have to pick two out of the three. Yes. Um, and I think if you're young, or if you even have the capacity, meaning you don't have family commitments and stuff like that, I think as much as you can, try to find out what your passions are when, you're, when you can. And then... But also be able to do that alongside a 9 to 5 job. I definitely agree with Taran in that it's a balancing act um, and that money is still very important and you still need money to get by every single day. But when you have the time 
and the luxury to actually find out what your passions are, do that first. And then if you can find a job and do it alongside your nine to five job, and if your passion can also give you money, then that's great. Then you've won the lottery in adulthood, basically. But um, until then, until you find out what your passions are, because I'm sure not everyone here actually knows what your true passions are, right? I'm still exploring and I still don't know. But um, work towards that goal, find that out. And then somewhere along the way, when time is right, you can work towards your passions. That is actually very good advice because I, at your age, I didn't know what my passion was. Great. And until today, I, I don't know if comedy is my passion, but it's okay. La. It's, it's not bad. Uh, Nuzro, what about, okay, first the question. When you were a kid, yeah. what did you want to be? What was your cheater, cheater? Cheater, cheater. Okay. So when I was a kid, um, a computer always fascinated me. Okay. But I didn't know what kind of job um, that was related to computer. So I, I asked my dad and he would say, oh, okay, a software engineer. So when I go to school and the teacher asks, okay, what's your cheater, cheater? Whenever I say, when I grow, um, when, when I become an adult, I want to be a software engineer, everyone will look at me like, what's that? <laughs> what's a software engineer? Because in the early 20s, a software engineer wasn't that famous, yeah. right? Um, yeah, so um, from an early age, I always wanted to be involved in IT. Yeah. All right. So do you have a passion? Do you have like, do you sing? Do you act? Do you dance? Um, actually, I do act. Um, okay. I was involved in theater and I always liked filmmaking. So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why we started the video production company. Right. But I would say my interest um, also revolves around computer and IT. Yeah. Right. So when talking about passion and money, I think it's a very famous question, especially during for our generation, right? Until like um, there's a term right now called the quarter life crisis. Usually, we only have the midlife mid -life crisis. crisis. Right now, it's quarter-life crisis. Okay, so in, in my opinion, let's say that you have a job and it pays a decent salary and you can cover all your, your expenses, right? And then you have another option. You have another job that, can, uh, that has a higher salary. Which one would I choose? Um, um, let's say the decent salary one is the one you like and the highest salary is the one that you do not like. I would choose the one that I like because I cannot imagine doing something that I do not like every day for the rest of my life, okay? Right. For me, um, it would lead to unhappiness, which will affect my mental health, and eventually it would make me underperform in the, com in the company. So at the end, I will just be a burden to the company. Um, okay, and another, another, one more thing that I would like to share is that we should also value the opportunity to learn in terms of what the company can offer in terms of resources and learning. There's this one quote from George Mack, he's the writer of an article called The Salary Trap. Um, he said that if you can focus on learning instead of earnings, you will have a sense of fulfillment that no money can buy. Mm -hmm. And ironically, in an ever-changing world, a fast-paced world, that would lead to more money too. I'm, and I guess that's my comment for passion and money. I mean, yeah. look, listening to you guys, uh, reading books and stuff, when I was yeah. your age, I was reading comics. <laughs> okay, so when Thanos said half the population, yeah, that was me. Uh, okay, so what, do you, what, do you, did, did you, what did you want to be when you were a child? Um, when I was a child, I want to be same a doctor. Usually, doctor that, at that current time, ah, if you are doctor good in your move. academic, okay, you are a doctor. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not always the case. Um, I I didn't take that science punya path. I take I took accounting and finance. Wow. For okay. me, it is always a chicken and egg situation. You don't know which one is first, the egg or the okay. chicken. <laughs> right. Okay, for me, uh, passion brings the money to you. Because yeah. when people see you are passionate, they are more likely to invest in you. For example, in my university days, I used to be involved with uh, Warwick Jailbreak competition. Mm -hmm. Have you heard of uh, Jailbreak? Yes. I was part of it in my Really? Yes, oh yes. my god. Um, I really had fun. Uh, it is basically an analogy. Um, if a prisoner is in jail and they want to break through the jail, they, and then uh, he will have to escape. 
the furthest as he can. So I basically um, participated that competition where I have to travel for 36 hours like a prisoner without any money. <laughs> so we, I managed to escape to Paris uh, by his hiking. Wow, okay. Yeah. Um, so when I posted about this online, right, on my IG, on my Instagram, people will be like, um, oh my God, this is such for a good cause because at the time uh, I collaborated with the charity for the disabled person. So um, I said in, the, in my Instagram, I want to join this competition, but I need to fundraise. So please um, buy my rendang for charity and dessert for charity. And they will be like, take my money. Right. <laughs> so when you say you, uh, you are passionate in something, they will, be not, they will not be hesitate to support you. So in a career world, I believe that you need to have passion in whatever you do. It is, uh, or what we, the Japanese people call as ikigai. The sense of purpose in life or the reason to go out of bed so that we will not be dragging our foot to work every day. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so when you have the patient, right, you will work hard you, without any force. Nobody's telling you to do that, but I'm willing to do that because I love that. And when you are in a career world, right, don't restrict yourself to doing your job only because um, you don't know which one might be the avenue that you would want to take on later. Mm. Uh, for for example, as you, right? You never know that you will be a comedian today, right? Nope, nope, not at all. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting um, path to take on. Um, patient also helps us to not give up. It also uh, makes you feel good about what you're doing. Right. No, no, I want to ask you, can yeah. you learn to be passionate about something? What, what do you think? Like, okay, like, let's say there's a, there's a lot of people who took... Uh, a subject in in school or in college because they had to no choice right so they went there they did accounting let's say they did engineering software or whatever lah that they did and then eventually they landed a job like that now can you learn how to be to be passionate about that that that's something that you don't know something that you're not no good? something like you know you you stumble into that job right oh. <laughs> because you okay some there's a lot of people who at that time when they enter college, they do still don't know what they want to do, right? So they eventually just take the first course that they see, which is sometimes accounting, sometimes mass comm, sometimes software engineering, sometimes even medical. Okay, like, they, they, you know, if you stumble into medical, it's quite good. But, you know, at the end, they, can you learn to be passionate about something that you stumbled upon? I think passion, um, it comes from within, but it can also come uh, along the time. Like, um, throughout your path, you discover that, oh, I actually like this. Yeah. Um, but in this case, Ria, uh, if you stumble upon a job that you will never think of, um, I think uh, for the fresh graduates, um, you might have to accept the fact that you might not always get the first job, uh, the dream job for the first job. Sometimes you might need to start ugly. Yeah. <laughs> you might, uh, sometimes you need to start small at the local companies or the small companies, but it's still good though because you still get to learn so many things because it, usually in a small size team, um, you can do a holistic uh, task. So it will equip you with skills. And these skills, you can move towards your goal. Let's say you stumble upon this job that you do not like. So you, you change your goal. I actually want to, to do this. So you equip yourself at that job. And then you jump. <laughs> yeah. You, you, yeah. Fati, what do you think? Do you, do you think you can, you can learn to be passionate about something? Um, I personally... I, unless you find yourself getting really good at what you're doing, mm -hmm. then yes, you could become passionate about it because it comes easy to you, right? So you yeah. kind of feel like, ah, I can do that easily. Close my eyes, I can do it. But um, if it, I, I, but if you're good at something, but it doesn't satisfy you, like you still hesitate when you go to work, I feel like then you kind of still aren't passionate about it. So maybe not really. Mm. I think at the end of the day, it still goes... Your heart still will still tell you what you really want to know. Your right. heart will still guide you and tell you what your passions are. But again, at the same time, I feel like you can always have a 9 to 5 and do your passions at, on the side. It doesn't have to be separate. You don't have to make that choice um, in life. And that just look for your passions, find it, and then work towards it. Um, and if you can also rake in money, then good for you. Nuzul, how? Kela. 
I mean, um, you, it's easy for you because you are passionate <laughs> about software engineering. You became a software engineer <laughs> and now you make software. It's, it, it's so easy, right? That, that path was there. Like, what, what if, what if, like, you know, along the way, you became an accountant? Yeah. Okay, the thing is, Kevin, um, I would say that um, even though I'm working in IT right now and I've always wanted to work in IT, I'm always open to explore new things. Because, um, because I think that's the wonderful thing about life. You, you, you cannot expect what's going to happen in the future. Maybe in five years, um, I'll be a stand-up comedian. <laughs> I'm not sure, but maybe it's a hey, possibility. Open right? mic is open. <laughs> huh? You can come, do three minutes, no problem. Yeah, maybe I, I can open for you. <laughs> All right. So um, I think I'm always open to try out new things. And even though when... when, when when you go into the working life, right, when you're working um, for a big company, um, it doesn't mean that I um, work about IT all the time. Sometimes I have to think up about strategies on how to uh, make sure that the users use my software. Yeah. Okay. So we have to be like some, some sort of like a salesperson, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. I think like it's, op it's fine to, be op to open your choices. Yeah. All right. Darren? Um, well, Kevin, I, I, I go back to the point that Fatin made earlier about not knowing what your passion is and then you like, just have to look for it constantly, right? So you might find passion, your passion in the weirdest of places, right? So it is possible that you mm. might stumble into a job um, and suddenly like, you realize you're good at it and you like it, you like doing it on a daily basis, you, like, you feel like it's worth your effort, worth your time and who knows? So it's, I, I, th I feel like I would... The, 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 the example I would give is like trying out a food. For example, a cuisine that you're not used to. You wouldn't know whether you like it or not until you've tried it. And who knows, that might be the best dish you've ever tried ever in your life. So, so I guess at the end of the day, um, you have to keep your mind open to the possibility that the passion, what you're meant to do, mm. is still out there. It's still unexplored. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember because I didn't choose to be an engineer. Mm -hmm. I... I, I stumbled upon it because I didn't know what I wanted to be. To be fair, when I was a kid, when the teacher asked me what I wanted to be when I was, when I, what's my cheater cheater? <laughs> I told my teacher, and this is absolutely true, I told my teacher I want to be a butterfly. 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 <laughs> you know why? Because I can be a caterpillar and a butterfly, so two in one. I was a, I was a very dumb kid. Okay, so I didn't know butterfly was not a thing. <laughs> but eventually when I got to SPM, uh, I knew I wanted to do arts, right? but they didn't let me because my grades were good, so they had to put me in science. I didn't know what I wanted to do until my, my mom just pushed me towards engineering. Right? So I did find my passion in engineering. I just didn't find my passion in waking up at 8 o'clock every morning. Mm -hmm. That was the one thing I didn't... I hated that. Like, you know, how, how do you cope with that? How do you guys cope with that? Like, Fatin, how do you cope with that? Um... Bit hard. Actually, maybe I can relate to you a little bit. Um, I think actually up until post SPM, I actually really wanted to be a lawyer. Okay. And I still have dreams of becoming a lawyer one day. One day. Uh, maybe doing a degree, a second degree on it. I'm actually an economist by training right now, and I work in banking technically as a regulator. But I personally, I feel like just because your degree says one thing, it doesn't mean you're restricted to it. And I think. This is something that I really want people to consider because just because you're an engineer by training doesn't mean you can't go into um, accounting one day. For me, I do have aspirations to go into tech one day and I'm not going to let my title as an economist stop me there. And I think uh, because our generation, we are being challenged all the time, I think um, personally, I don't think it's too much of a stretch for us to imagine ourselves in a career that is completely out of what you're supposed to be trained to be do, to do lah. Okay. So I think don't be shackled by whatever you are trained in, technically. Yeah. Okay, so what about you? Um, the question was about waking up in the morning, right? Yeah, we know what. Like, how <laughs> do you cope with with that? Like, you know, we we, we, we I, you guys, I guess, is a different generation. Like right. now, it, it's working from home. It's easier because yeah. you can get up and straight go to work. Like I had to get up and go through an hour of jam before I can reach, yeah. you know, my workplace. Like, how, 
like how do you guys cope with this do you, do, do you do you do you think like passion can overcome this like i i'm really passionate about this but you know i i got to go through in, all this actually um kavin i can relate to you because uh, i stay um for um far away from my workplace um it's like i have to commute 45 km a day okay so <laughs> um on a good day it's maybe 50 minutes on a bad day jam and everything it yeah. can lead to an hour and a half yep so i have to wake up i'm not a morning person but i know that i have to wake up early 5:30 and the first thing that i do is go down go downstairs and get a cup of coffee yeah, yeah. that's what wakes me up if i don't get my caffeine dose in the morning i'll have headache the whole day yeah and so um because um because of the pandemic right i have mornings where uh, i have days where i work at home and then i have to go to office so at home there's no not much um trouble because you just can just wake up and then open your computer and do your work but then when when i have to go to office i have to wake up early and everything and um at first it was difficult it was really difficult i would like complain in the morning or oh, why do i have to do this and everything but then i try to find something interesting at the office and which is every day i want to talk to a new person in the office yeah because um the because i think that's the point of going to the office you want that um human interaction you want you want to know your colleagues and everything uh, and the good thing is that when i talk to my seniors right um they're really open they love teaching they love um like talking about it stuff with me i ask questions all these weird questions and we would discuss that together and i find that something is really interesting and that's the add on on why i feel like okay when i wake up in the morning okay maybe today i want to meet this person uh, that that was wakes me up in the morning yeah okay nurul i i i'm going to switch up the question a little bit okay so when you were at university right did the university prepare you enough for the work experience that you're having now okay um the university it is actually our own initiative mm. but the university provide the platform for us so it is up to you you want to get engaged actively with the university or not and as for me i, I have always loved being involved with the university um i was a part of the warwick international student office when i was um in university of warwick where i do a lot of um sometimes i i be a helper for warwick welcome for the new students coming internationally local students post graduate and the graduate um it's like orientation week lah and so even i used to be an assistant arrival weekend if i said that word what comes to your mind assistant arrival weekend actually it just helping yeah. students with their luggage to their dorm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was thinking even, more like GRO but different lah. No. Oh no, actually it's not. It is basically even the small things as that because it makes me to encourage me to engage with the local um mm. for residents there, local students because if you do not have any reason to talk with them then you will forever be in your comfort zone, be in your circle, Malaysian circle. So that is why I love to be involved. um because that's the reason we go overseas right yeah. we want to get as much as experience as we can um so um i did my internship as well as i mentioned earlier and it did uh, broaden my mind a little bit uh, not a little bit uh, well the internship just for a few months so yalah yeah <laughs> okay um so the quantity doesn't matter actually but the quality how the experience shape you as a person how the experience prepare you for the work life as for me when i enter a project or society or any events there are so many skills for example when you meet new people you can network when for the first time ever i met with taren i can know how to approach him he looks uh, approachable or not you can know how to scan people the, uh, do they look like defensive or receptive uh, and then some event taught you how to learn your mistake uh, learn to admit your mistake for example when i did my internship right um my my boss at that time my senior at that time actually instructed me to do a task which i heard wrongly so i ended up doing it wrongly so there is always the les- the lesson learned which is do not be shy to ask if you don't do not understand because you do not want to wait waste your time doing such a you know uh 
a redundant job or any things lah. Okay. okay. So uh, in fact, so equip yourself with skills when you are in university. It is actually helpful. But according to the LinkedIn, LinkedIn report uh, title the talent for 2021, the future talent for 2021, it mentioned that actually the skills that uh, are needed for the future jobs are the skills that are transferable and also technical. Uh, experience and education only um, encompass about 20% of it. So actually, uh, as long as you have skills, then um, employers are more likely to, to accept you. In fact, two out of three companies, two out of three in, uh, companies doesn't mind. This is a research done by LinkedIn report which I've read. Two out of three companies doesn't mind to hire you if you are from a completely different industry, given that you have the skills matched with your job description. So um, don't be so rigid with your industry. You can always explore other paths as well. Yeah. Uh, you and I went overseas for very different reasons. You went for experience. I went to get away from my parents. <laughs> right, uh, Tarun, the, the skills in your university, do, do you think it's transferable to, to work life as well? Um, so, so skills, I, I'm not going to talk about specific skills like coding or like course, the education course, knowledge yeah, because yeah. Like, those things, like, that's what university is yeah, meant yeah, to do, right? Yeah. But rather than that, it's, I'm, I think the most transferable skill is... Being independent. Because mm. for the first time in your life, you're going to be moving away from your family, from the support, the safety nets that your parents or your siblings have provided you with. And uh, you're going to learn to live by yourself. And part of that involves making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, growing them, growing, from, growing in terms of learning from your mistakes, owning up your mistakes. That provides such a valuable platform, a valuable, such a good opportunity to grow from. And I think that's the most transferable thing you can bring uh, when you move into the workplace because uh, more often than not, you're not, gonna always not, you're not always going to get support. You're not always going to get training or advice from your peers. Certain things you have to figure out by yourself. You are going to make mistakes along the way. Some of them are going to be really costly for, your, for you or your, for your company. And it's all a matter of whether you can survive beyond that. Right. And this, going beyond even jobs, I know like, that's the phase where you move into adult, adulthood. I think it's just useful in that sense, uh, yeah. learning how to be independent. Um, other than that, I totally agree with uh, Huda. Sorry, I call her Huda. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, because I was not told. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Uh, soft skills is extremely important. Um, communication, teamwork. Uh, not all of us are born that way. Some of us are introverts. Uh, we don't. We don't. When you don't feel very comfortable like being in a very social setting, right? Yeah. So I think um, university can be that platform, can be that place where you can try out. Yeah. Try out talking to... And I think we have been very fortunate in that sense to have been at universities where we were able to meet uh, people from very different backgrounds, a lot of different cultures. You see things which might seem so weird to you, so unusual to you, but then yet when you listen to their perspective, their opinion, and then you learn to accept it, I think it just generally improves us as human beings, prepares us, matures us uh, when we're ready to become adults, ready to take up the job. I like yeah. that. I like that. You go to university to grow up, right? Yeah. yeah in a it's way. a safe space to grow up. Yeah. La, it's a, yeah. Fatim? Um, so I think ah. university, unfortunately for me, I didn't fully immerse myself in the university experience. Mm -hmm. Like Huda said, um, your university gives you all these platforms, right? And it's really up to you to actually um, avail yourself to them. Mm -hmm. And I think, unfortunately, I didn't really do that so much. But one thing I did pick up from university was... Um, so I joined uh, the larger Malaysian society in the UK. Actually, I met Taran in one of the uh, networking events there. So for me, the biggest takeaway from that was actually networking. I'm actually an introvert by nature, but... Due to my exposure to all these like networking events, I think I've learned to um, put myself out there and be social. Um, so I think that's uh, on, that's like one thing on top of all the other things that Huda and Tarin Bo has said lah. Soft skills are really really important. Um, I think that's definitely something that your um, employer will look out for in you because, like Huda said, all those technical skills and even Tarin said the same thing. All those technical skills are what they expect out of you already. But your like project management skills, your time management skills your ability to work in a team are really valuable and 
for you, it doesn't, your journey doesn't stop here as well. You can continue honing it in over time. Uh, Nuzro? Um, okay, so in my uni life, right, um, I went to uni for four years in total. And I started off slow, actually. In my first year, I didn't do any extracurricular activities. Uh, okay, I just studied. And the reason why was because that I was so scared. I was so scared of meeting new people in a foreign country. Okay? But then when second year came, I thought to myself, right, I have to do something. This is an opportunity that I cannot miss. So I still started off slow. I joined Malaysian communities activities first. I joined theater. And then um, come third year, I had some confidence. So I joined engineering competitions, which required me to work with uh, students across the world. Okay? It was a wonderful experience. Then I joined startup competitions that, required, um, that taught me how to pitch in front of angel investors and venture capitalists. Okay? So um, what I'm trying to say here is that I couldn't do all that in my first year. And what led me to do that was that all the small steps that I took. Okay, imagine this. Imagine that you improve yourself, a small margin, just maybe like 1% every day, okay, for one year. You improve 1% every day, um, and then at the end of the year, you'll become 37 times a better person the year before, okay? So take those small steps. <clears throat> yeah. All right, okay. So, you know, I was, I was on the earlier panel with employers, mm -hmm. And asking, they, the whole time they were just talking about, this is what we want from our employees. This is what we want from our fresh graduates. This is what we want from the thing. Now, look, let's turn the tables, all right? What are y'all looking for in an employer? Like, Fatin, where do we start with you? Um, sorry, you had a panelist earlier, Mr. That was sitting. Mr. Murthy? Mr. Murthy, he was spot on actually about talking about what the fresh graduates wanted. We hmm. want flexibility, we want to be trusted. We want um, to be learning all the time. And we also want to know why. We do have this genuine curiosity within us. And I think, so personally for me, I think I want an employer that wants to embrace how the generation is like. Because exactly like how they put it, the generations are different. And yeah. I do want to work with an employer that doesn't um, look at me and doesn't like the, the things that I bring to the table. Um, flexibility is very important to me as well. I love being able to work from home and I'm kind of glad that COVID allowed that to happen. So for me, I just want um, to be able to develop myself wherever I am. I want to be trusted by my employer, but also at the same time, I want to be given that flexibility so that I can um, explore things on the side while I also, you know, devote myself to this company. Mm. So... Um, I think this actually relates to one of my experience during an uh, interview for an internship position for a startup company in Malaysia. Okay, so during the interview, I think everything went well until the final question. They asked me, um, do you have any questions for us? Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I paused for a long time because I tried so hard not to say no because if I said no, then it would show like um, I have no interest for the company, right? So my mistake was I didn't do any background research about the company. And after a long, awkward pause, I eventually said no. And obviously enough, I didn't get the internship position. I'm not sure if that's the sole reason, but of course it left a bad impression. Um, so my opinion is that for an interview, it doesn't have to be one-sided. Okay? So the interviewer is trying to find out if you're a good fit for the company. But at the same time, you're trying to find out if the company is a good fit for you. So ask questions about the company, show your interest, and think about how you can contribute to the company. Yeah. So do your research, um, read the latest news, um, read about their recent projects, and yeah, ask questions. <laughs> and Huda? Oh, now you're, you're calling yeah, me Huda. I got, I, got, I got corrected halfway through, all right? Okay. Um, so, an employer that I will want, or environment, I will say, because employer is basically the environment that we will, yeah, we will be yeah. working in. It's an environment that we are free to give our opinion, where 
um, we respect each other. I respect you as my employer and um, the employee respect me as their employees. Um, without any bias, but that's... Okay, uh, somehow I got this advice, right? Because uh, um, everyone knows that I'm going to be in this forum and I ask for advice uh, or the tips that they want to deliver. And there are a few of them say that um, where, while you're still young, grab as many as experience as you want. Um, whatever the, the employer asks you to do, just do because um, you want to learn the skill because that's how they start. Usually the, the previous uh, employees at that time, you know, now it's a, an, an advanced punya situation, right? Mm. So uh, somehow it depends on you what, what you want. Like, do you want to start? Are you willing to start ugly? Are you uh, or do you not will for that? So I think get to know yourself well, uh, but um, ask yourself, is this employer a good fit for you? Can you cope with this um, company? So uh, do your research. I agree with Nuzul's um, point. Do your research, get to know the industry well, and ask yourself whether uh, they are the kind of people you want to work for. All right. And Tarun? Um, so I think a lot of people in our generation right now, right, um, are looking for ownership, sense of ownership in the work they do. Uh, and that's what they expect the employees to pass on to them. That relates to the points the earlier forum uh, panelists have made as well, right, about inquisitive minds. They want to know why I'm doing this, uh, what's the outcome of it, like how is it going to impact me. A sense of ownership essentially in what, the, what kind of work uh, that we do, not just blindly following rules and instructions, right? So that's first and foremost, I think, in a general sense. Personally, um, my opinion, I'm, I'm looking for an employer who can provide um, good support in terms of being able to train myself. So let it be in terms of on-job training or let it be in terms of maybe me wanting to do part-time studies or even me looking for a side gig or something. I, I, I want, I'm looking for that support from my employers if possible because at the end of the day, um, we are working to live. So, so there's no point beating yourself up too much on the job and, and any flexibility or support that the employers are able to offer um, in that sense is much appreciated. Right. So I think a lot of people in our generation would appreciate the same thing as well. Yeah. I, you guys have such responsible answers. <laughs> I, sw I swear, when I was your age, this you know what I wanted an employer? A pool table. <laughs> right? that, was, that was like my ultimate goal. Like, you all you got a pool table? I mean, I, what do you want me to do? Wash toilet, can. Right? To be you're, honest, you're I, like, I want an employer to respect <laughs> me as a human being. I, in my time, they didn't even think I was a human being. <laughs> you, you work. Actually, you know? Kavi, maybe I can add on to that. So there's a joke that goes on within our generation that mm. uh, we look out for an employer that takes care of our mental health. Mm. But when we ask for mental health, the employer will give us a pizza party instead. Correct. Yeah. No, no, that is correct. Like, you know, but yeah, I, I, I get it, right? You guys have all these expectations and all this, like, you know, I want uh, my employer to respect me and all. Is it really that easy to find that kind of employer to do this thing? Is it, is it, in your experience, I mean, I'm sure you guys have been through a few places, been through a few, uh, you know, uh, this thing. Is it easy to find that kind of employer? I mean, it was easy because we found two, Micron and Flex, just now, mm -hmm. who, you know, were very, you know, they were like, you know, we have the counselors, we have this, we have that. In fact, I know Flex has a pool table, right? <laughs> so, like, is it easy to find that kind of employer? What it? I think it kind of goes back to what Nuzul said earlier. Know the kind of questions to ask. You need to really look inwards and know what kind of culture resonates with you. Because for every single person, it's different. Like, some people might want to have, um, might want to work in a place that's like really fast-paced, but like really good leaders that inspire them. But some people just want to work a 9 to 5 and go back home to their family. Um, and for some people, they just, um, they just want to come to a workplace that they feel like they're part of a family. And that's fine. And to me, um, all these workplaces offer you a, a, a plethora of like things that you can really consider. But what's important is during your interview, you have to ask the right questions to know if that work culture suits you. And if it does suit you, then that's great. But if it doesn't, then you can always just move on to the next one. Right. Okay. Because if I would have done that, like, I, you see, like, last time we couldn't choose. Like, we go to an interview. If we don't take, people call you choosy. Right? Mm -hmm. And now, like, you know, you kind of have to be choosy because you, this is your life. Like you said, you don't, 
you don't live to work, you work to live, right? So what what do you think? Is it easy to find employment? Uh, like pulling from my experience, my personal experience, and also experience of my peers, right? I don't think it's that easy. Mm. Um, it's also difficult um, to find the exact kind of information because certain things like culture, right? Mm. It's not exactly like, I mean, they put things on their websites, fancy words, but you would only know what's actually happening in there once you are properly mm. in, in this environment, in that situation, right? So it's not exactly easy to gauge on whether the interest, your interest aligns with what the company is doing, whether it's a mismatch or not. Um, but then I think also, fortunately enough, in Malaysia, there's the, the, the conversation moving in that direction, uh, just because there's a demand for it, I think. People are demanding that it really should be treated better, there should be flexibility, especially the pandemic has made us question the whole dynamics of life and work. So hopefully, I feel like uh, we are moving towards a, a place where employers are slowly recognizing this and are willing to bring about the changes in their workplaces uh, to accommodate these needs. Huda? Um, yes, I agree with Tyron that it is not easy because um, basically they are human, we are human, and human have every each of us are, is unique. Right. Uh, so some people might find this employer actually fit them because it, it is the same with their personality. But for us, maybe it's just not fit. So um, I, to bring back your point, uh, Fatin's point, where you need to ask the right question in order for you to discover whether this employer, um, you can cope with this employer or not. Nuzro, do you think it's easy? Um, I agree with the rest that it's not easy. But at the same time, what we can do is that if we really want that something, why not we try ask for it? Uh, because mm. if we don't ask for it, you'll never know what the answer is. If okay. you see that you want to learn something and gain a new skill, why not just ask your employer, hey, can I go for this training? Um, if the employer says no, then you got your answer. But if they say yes, then there you have it. You have what you want. Next time, I'll ask for the pool table, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, I mean, we've come to the last uh, point that, uh, you know, of questions that I have to ask, which is, uh, what advice do you have for fresh graduates out there? Like, what eager to, you know, kind of get into the workforce. They, you know, they, they're trying to work their way in. What, what advice do you have? Huda, why don't you start? Thank you, Kavin. Um, for me, employers are searching for the right attitude. What is meant by the right attitude? It means that you have the drive, the hunger to achieve something, the hunger to grow and contribute more, and for learning opportunities. So if you demonstrate to employers that you are, you are hungry for this, that, um, they will be more likely to hire you. But it depends. Because uh, it depends on your interview. If your first touch point with your employer is uh, face to face, Show to them, bring them, brings confidence to the table. Okay. Because uh, show to them that you are ready to take on everything. Just bring it on. Give me, uh, be a resourceful person. Uh, everything is at your fingertip. So there should not be excuse that uh, oh, I couldn't do, I couldn't do this because you can learn things. We are still young. We can still uh, learn things. Um, but if your first touch point is through your CV, uh, put your energy to build your CV. So that it will be a solid CV. Uh, show the drive, the passion, and the skills. So back to you. Um, so from, from my opinion um, on this is basically have your priorities set on what are you looking for um, from your job. Like what, what, what do you want from it at the end of the day? Make a priority list. I think um, in today's world, there's so many different kinds of jobs. They used to be so, so clearly defined, like what you mentioned, right? Like so clearly defined roles, but I don't think that's no longer the case. So many overlaps, so many gray areas, so many intersections. Um, so I feel like it's very possible for you to come up with a very well-defined priority list and try to look for a job that can fulfill those uh, priority or fulfill those needs that you have. Um, so I think that'd be very useful. But a more practical advice in terms of like, maybe interviews, I'll, I'll chip in as well, um, would be, Train yourself. Uh, mm. You might have a company that you really want to get into. Uh, please don't go for that company right away. Train yourself with other companies okay. for interviews first. Uh, putting yourself in a, in a situation where you're going, you're bombarded with questions, it, it trains you. 
so that by the time you reach the place that you want to actually try for, uh, you have enough experience in handling the heat, handling the tense questions, and you're a hopefully able to do much better than where you started off at. Uh, probably employers will hate me for saying this, but but I hope that it's it's useful. No, that, that's actually great advice. Like I wish I had that advice when I was when I was going for interviews because what I will do is that's the company I want. That's the first one I'll go interview, and then it's like you know choice number two, choice number three. Yeah. But yeah, then you but you, yeah, you move upwards. Yeah, you are right though. If I would have gone from five or three to one, I didn't have to accept five. Right, I, I could have accepted. I mean, if I got the job, I could have. Yeah, yeah it's good advice. Uh, Fatin? Um, actually, <laughs> I'm in the third category. So, Taran's in the first category, Kavin's in the second category. I'm in the third category. I used to tell myself no all the time. Mm. To say I wanted to work in company A, I chicken out and not apply at all. Okay. So, I think the biggest advice I give to graduates is don't let yourself deny yourself of all these opportunities. Mm -hmm. Let someone else say no. Just like how Nuzu said earlier, just ask. Just apply. Just put yourself out there. Um, but on top of that, I think it's also really important that you um, really pick up all these like small technical skills that you think aren't exactly very relevant. Like, I honestly think there's... Um, I think for us, right, there's so much opportunity for us to pick up stuff, especially for Microsoft Office apps, like being able to do Excel really well, doing Word really well. I think Word and PowerPoint gets overlooked so much. But if you can really pick up all these skills, it can really help you deliver your project faster, more efficiently. And like your boss might not notice all these things about you that you're really good at Excel, that use all these like fancy functions and stuff like that. But it really helps you do your job better. Mm. It gives you that satisfaction as well. So I would say do that. Pick up on all these like small technical skills that you think aren't that important. Yeah. You're right. I, I, I actually started learning uh, you know, office skills on TikTok. Yeah, they, they have the one-minute one video where you, you can do this. I'm like, yes. really? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, lah. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Nazro? All right, okay. So, my advice for students, um, don't repeat the same mistake I did during my uni where I felt like I didn't do enough. Try new things and find your zone of genius where you love, you love to do it and also you're good at it. Okay, so for fresh graduates, um, even before you land a job, practice that 9 to 5 routine, meaning that you wake up early in the morning, you send your resumes, because if you don't send your resumes, nothing is going to ha happen. So make sure you send. And after that, maybe do some online courses out there. There's abundance of resources in the web. So try to gain a new skill or try to improve yourself. And then try something outside of the ordinary. So if you um, connect uh, with a recruiter through LinkedIn or Twitter, send them a formal letter explaining why you're interested in working for the company and why you're the best fit for them. Okay? Do this 9 to 5 every day and I, I, I guarantee you, you'll land a job in no time. So just remember that um, you don't have to improve yourself until the top level on day one. Just that small margin of 1% every day. And by the end of the year, you'll become a more and better person. That's my advice. Oh, that's great advice, guys. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank Pavin, you so much. If yes. I may add yes, uh, Fatin's point, when she mentioned about the chicken out, right? Um, I came across this quote. Mm. Always go with choices that scares you the most. Because that kind of choice will make you grow and make you step out of your comfort zone. So... Yep. Um, I think, um, like, being in this stage, right, it is pretty terrifying, but <laughs> took on the challenge. Yes. Do you know who's, uh, who's the most terrified in this stage? Me. Right? Because, uh, look, listen, y'all are supposed to be here. Y'all are supposed to be talking about this. I'm a comedian. What am I doing here? Nobody knows. Alright? So, yeah, they, they just hired me because apparently I'm a pretty face. But then they put a mask on this. So, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> but thank you, guys. Thank you so much for, for, for this. You know, you, you have no idea how impressed I am with you guys. Because at your age, I was not doing anything worthwhile in my life. And you guys have, have you know, taken that step. And you all are inspiring other people to do, you know, so many good things. Which is great. Thank you guys. But first, uh, I would like to open to the floor. Kalau ada apa-apa soalan yang nak ditanya, boleh tanya. Jangan malu-malu. Please don't be shy. Just ask any question. Uh, if you want to know my address, my phone number also can ask. 
not all at once, please. Do we have any questions? One. Ah, there. Yes. <clears throat> Don't worry, a very handsome man will come and give you a mic. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, uh, my name is Jana, and I thoroughly enjoyed this session. I just have one question regarding how do you guys, how would you guys advise for preparation for work and life balance in the sense of you guys are, um, as I'm aware, you guys are like under five years, but much experience in your job already. But I think um, what would you guys advise for work-life balance in terms that, okay, I'm a newbie, I need to catch up, I need to utilize my time and learn a lot of things. And as well as, you know, um, having a balanced social life outside of a nine to five job. So that's my question. Thank you. Um, Anyone want to take this? I'll, I'll Go on. Jana. Um, so th I think I'd, I'd like to make two points. First is, I think uh, coming in new to the industry, new to a job, uh, is always going to be difficult. The learning curve is most probably going to be very steep. You are going to be spending a lot of hours trying to learn what you're supposed to do, trying to learn social cues from your seniors. Because sometimes they say something, but it means a different thing. You do the whole thing wrong. Yeah. All part of the learning curve. But um, hopefully it gets better. Uh, it does. It did for me. I, I struggled a lot for the first few months in my current job. But then you learn to do things more efficiently. Um, just because you're getting better. Because like what um, Nuzu was saying, right? you learn something every day that improves uh, you gradually and uh, hopefully things get better. Second thing is one of um, the things that a senior of mine mentioned to me that certain times you have to learn how to say no. Uh, and I think a lot of us in our generation, we, we kind of like borderline, borderline are people pleasers. Like we find it very hard to say no. Uh, despite, in spite, like it might kill us, you know, we might end up working so, so many late hours and all, but we still refuse to say no. But then there has to be a cutoff point. There has to be a time when you need to know that, oh, too much is too much. And, um, you know, I would like to work in this project and all, but, but I just don't have the time for it. And I think a lot of people do understand that. They're learning to come to understand that, oh, you know, like, not everyone is willing to work from 8 a.m. all the way to midnight uh, for like a few weeks in a row. Um, so hopefully you are in a team that is able to accept that answer and then let you lead a well-balanced uh, like work and life situation. Yeah. Your employer actually plays a very big part in your work-life balance because it's not just you. You, you can want work-life balance as much as you want. If your employer doesn't allow it, guess what? You're not having work-life balance. You're having work, work balance. <laughs> Um, maybe I can add on. Sure, sure yeah. Um, so Kevin was spot on. Um, boundary management with your employee is really hard. But I think uh, for us as a generation, if enough of us actually communicate our needs to have a work-life balance, I think slowly um, it will come. Um, it might not be immediate, like your, maybe your first job might not give you the work-life balance that you envisaged. But I think if you slowly learn to communicate and find out the people who are, act, who are willing to give you that uh, work-life balance, work closer with these people, gain their trust, and hopefully that will help. Because so, for me, I think I found it really hard to set my boundaries as well, especially at the beginning, because I just wanted to say yes to every single project and prove myself. But I think slowly, once you learn to prove yourself, you will uh, start, to be able, start to also learn how to say no. But also, you'll start to find the right people that can actually give you that work-life balance. And I think that really helps me, in my case at least. Yeah. And also, set your work-life boundaries as well. Set expectations on when you want to work, when you don't want to work. And slowly, people will start to understand and people respect that as well. Yeah. I mean, I remember when I started work, my, I, I, I felt like all I had to do was work towards uh, work-life balance where it's more life than work, right? So I, I started with work, 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 because I work as an engineer and a comedian. So I, I went to work, finish work, go and do co comedy, you know, for, and, and I did this for 10 years, right? Until I came to a point where I can quit my job and I had more life than work. So now what I do is three, uh, I work 30 minutes a day, right? And the rest of the day I'm playing Spider-Man on PS5. 
<laughs> so yeah, pretty 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 cool work life balance, right? Anybody anybody else? Yeah. Okay. I just would like to emphasize on what Tarin said just now was that yeah, I agree with you. It's when you have a lot of workload, it's really important to say no. Yeah. If not, burnout is is such a dangerous thing to your mental health. And another thing that I learned was that um, try to eliminate repetitive tasks through automation. Yeah. yeah. Because you don't want to do the same thing every day because it's such a waste of your time. Okay. Sometimes if you work more than you are required to, it's because you're just doing the same thing every day. Mm. All right. So that's... Um, if you're interested in automation, there's this thing called RPA, Robot Process Automation. Um, it's like a robot, but it's a software which will help you do um, repetitive tasks. Yeah. So that's why automation is such a hot topic currently. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to add that to that point. That's so true about automating certain parts of your daily tasks. Uh, for, for me, it's, I'm a very Excel heavy, uh, my work involves a lot of Excel. So, so then it, it, certain parts is just like copy pasting things over and over again. It's so pointless to do that. You'd rather spend one day or two or like even just take a whole week, learn some VBA code. It might not come to you instantly. It will be hard, learn it. But that thing you learn for that one week will save you so much time over the many years that you're going to work for. So it's an investment. Um, so yeah, I completely agree with Nozo on that point. Like try to automate yeah. it. So uh, to add on on that, um, every time you want to do something, ask yourself, is this the most efficient way of doing this? Uh, for example, right, if you have just started working in a new company and they give you like uh, so many books to read about the company and you feel like, I'm not going to finish this in soon, in near, pretty soon. So interview um, the people, network, and ask them verbally if that is, depends on how, how effective your, your learning style is lah. So ask yourself, is this the most efficient way? Yes. Uh, usually when you have just started in a new company, um, usually the, the, the journey is going to be a bit tough in the beginning, but it will um, settle down uh, soon like once you have discovered how to do things most efficiently. All right. So I guess that takes us to the end of the program. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for, you know, listening to my old, old man stories. And stuff like that. But, you know, uh, you guys have been great.